Leap Program presents Problem Solving Like a Professional. In today's session, we're going to talk about how to identify, dissect, and resolve a problem that you may be facing within your environment. Many of you may be watching this as part of your university course. Some of you may have already finished and are about to embark on a new journey in the corporate world, taking on new roles and responsibilities within the project management space or similar. During your time in the corporate space, you'll identify a number of different challenges. And in order to solve for some of those challenges, it's important to learn about how to problem solve. In organizations big and small, problems can be very, very big if left untreated. And so it's important that you think about how you can use these techniques to solve problems in your environment. Solving a problem using the fishbone diagram. The fishbone diagram, also known as Ishikawa, herringbone diagram, or cause and effect diagram. It's a visualization tool that helps you to categorize the potential causes of a problem in order to identify its root cause. It's used for problems big and small. And in the real world, we use it particularly as a brainstorming activity for teams when we're all trying to solve a complex problem. Using the fishbone diagram, you identify a problem statement. So let's do that now. Let's say that the resource process at the organization you were working in is ineffective. Let's say for this example, it's a large organization and in the department that you are working in, there's over 300 people that you need to manage. And so the resource process needs to change. But what has led to this ineffective process? Well, let's look at six key causes. In a fishbone diagram, there are six key themes highlighted in purple along the bones of the fishbone diagram. These themes will vary from diagram to diagram, but in many instances, these six are really good examples and can be used in many instances. For our resource process ineffective, which is the effect as a result of the causes, we then list the associated causes against each of those six themes. For example, people, there's too much intervention and there's a lot of human error resulting from the use of Excel spreadsheets. Also, policy side, there might be strict policies in place from human resources that are outside your control. And therefore, policy and the causes against that are also impacting our ability to have an effective resource process. So using the six key themes, as you can see, you need to start listing the possible causes of the problem. These causes can grow bigger and you may need to use more than one fishbone diagram. Once you've listed the causes under the six themes, you then need to think about how these causes can be solved for. Each one individually needs to be thought about and look at how you can eliminate or minimize the cause that's causing the problem in the first place. Solving a problem using interview techniques. A large part of the work that we do in the real world and as part of our consulting work is to meet with clients and identify challenges they may be faced with. Now coming in externally, whether you're starting a new role or coming in as a consultant is much more difficult than having immersed yourself within the organization. So we need to start by asking questions and identifying key themes and challenges. We may start talking to person A, who in turn, as part of that interview, will refer us to person B. And that person may refer us to person C. And as you can see, we continue to have a connecting of the dots with people and problems. That enables us to link the people with the key points and in turn, who start sharing more information from their unique perspective. As a result, we're going to be solving problems using the interview technique just by speaking to people and listening to them. Solving a problem using paired comparison. The paired comparison method, it's a handy tool for decision making. It describes values and it compares them to each other. It's often difficult to choose the best option when you have so many different options to choose from. Also, the potential options when compared visually lead to an overview that immediately helps to show you the right decision. In the real world, we like to use this with our managers or with clients when we're trying to help them make a decision, whether it's a decision on a tool, 
a decision on a process, or decision on something else. For the purpose of today's example, let's focus on comparing apples to oranges. First step, create the table. Along the top and down the side, you list the options you want to compare and assign them a letter. The letter can be any letter, but sequentially makes the most sense. In this example, we are trying to compare a tool called PPM, short for Project Portfolio Management. And let's just say there is apple, banana, tomato, and pear products. We then block out the cells. As you can see, the cells have been blocked out on the left-hand side because you can't compare apples with apples, bananas with bananas, tomatoes with the tomatoes, and pears with pears. Then, once you've blocked out the cells, you can start comparing options. Simply go row by row and decide whether you're going to go with apple PPM option A or banana PPM option B and write the letter that you've selected in that box. Continue down the list until you have a letter in each box. Once you've done that, go back through the list and decide using the numbering system, one being least important and three being very important, which one out of A and B is least important or very important. Once you've put a number associated with the letter, you are able then to rate those options and look at how those results add up. So let's look at this for example. Compare the numbers associated with the letter C. And you can see we've got three, one, and two. That's six, meaning that tomato PPM option C is so far the most desirable. So as you can see from this example, we've identified that tomato PPM option C is the best decision. Demonstrating problem solving using the three techniques we've just learned. Let's say, for example, we're working with a large banking client and spending time with the client, we undertook a number of reviews and it resulted in significant challenges for that department. There were challenges in all aspects of project management, including forecasting, resourcing, reporting. As a result, we needed to use the cause and effect diagram that we learned about earlier to detail the causes that were challenging this department from growing and scaling. We then used the interview technique to ascertain that information. As a result, we were able to identify the key priorities for that department. And then using the paired comparison method, we undertook a number of brainstorming sessions and then sat with the executives where they didn't agree on the same priorities. We used the paired comparison method to compare the priorities and as a result we were able to identify what we needed to focus on next. Escalating a problem. What happens when you can't fix a problem? You may have tried or maybe the problem is out of your control. In project management often the problem might be environmental or a problem that is outside the organization. You may not be senior enough in the organization to influence the remedy action required. So here is some steps. Explain your view of the problem. That is writing down everything about the problem and making sure it's easy for anyone to understand. Then explain what occurs if no action is taken. As best as you know, sometimes scaring people into taking action is helpful in the corporate world. Then explain the benefits of your proposed solution. If you have some, if you have some solutions that you think may work, but you need to escalate, you can identify those and take that to your manager. Sending it to the right people incorporates your direct line manager and maybe others in the organization who may be able to help resolve the problem. We highly recommend that if you have a problem to go to your manager with, that you take some recommendations or solutions with you so that they can help you make that informed decision. Remember, it's important to solve problems wherever you can and not ignore them. Ignoring a problem can often lead to much bigger things. Ignoring a problem in some industries can lead to catastrophic events. So therefore, if you identify a problem, raise it as a risk against your project and doing so will help others be aware of what the potential problem is. And then using the techniques learned today to solve the problem moving forward. Thank you. We hope you now have some tools and techniques to solving a problem like a professional.